when feeding a miniature horse, how do you balance keeping the gut full and keeping them at a good weight? I've had issues with colic in the past. I've heard giving them a little mineral oil as part of their diet helps. Is this true? How big of a concern are ulcers, founder, and laminitis? So again, we got a lot of community comments on this one, particularly oh. from Charismatic, who says, I have a mini and am always struggling to feed her enough without her getting fat, which is something I think we're all dealing with currently in quarantine. You mean, per like, personally? <laughs> personally. <laughs> right. Um, okay, so a lot of great questions. Again, keep me on track, make sure yep. I answer them all. Um, so, so miniature horses, here's your, your um, trivia thing. In, in driving, you know, a carriage drive, we, there's a lot of uh, mini, miniature horses in, in the sport. Do you know what we call them? Like when you're signing up for a show, you have like the draft horse division and horse and large pony, small Ooh, pony. Do you remember? For a miniature horse? Oh, cause I remember you talked about it last year cause you did some driving with miniatures last year, right? I did, yeah. I, care, yeah. I don't remember though. Oh. We, we call them BSEs, very small equine. <laughs> Appropriately named. Appropriately, yeah, yeah. So uh, they, they, they are horses, they have all the same issues and, and concerns as large breed horses, but because of their size, they also have some um, specific concerns that's, that's like just just uh, related to them. And mm -hmm. she's, she's hit on a lot of them. Um, I think the first one was uh, keeping the gut full and a good weight. Minis tend towards obesity. They have that yes. thrifty gene. They, they have evolved to um, get get a lot of nutrition out of very little food. They're very efficient. Um, one resource I looked at said, minis have robust appetites. So um, <laughs> that's, and then add to that, if, you, if you're used to having large, larger breed horses, you have a tendency to overfeed them. So between their uber efficiency and your tendency to overfeed them, and they don't get exercised as much commonly as large breed horses. You yeah, you're not riding animals. five times a week. Yeah. Yeah. Then it, it's sort of the perfect storm. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so I think the first step is to know your mini's weight and body condition score. So the okay. body condition scoring is the same. You use that Haneke scale. We have a video, we have articles on our website. Um, it goes from one to nine and you want to keep your mini at five, which is ideal. Okay. And watch that my favorite term, regional adiposity, which is the fat deposits, the lumps, like in the neck and behind the shoulder and the dog of the tail, you know, those are not good. Um, well, that's good to know because like with minis, I think it's easy for them to all have like that, like hot belly kind of look to them. But to your point, like it's good to do the whole body condition score to see, are we seeing any fat deposits and not yes. just use that round belly to kind yeah. of- Yeah, and you should, you should do the body condition scoring and, and the weight, weight um, at least once a month, if not more frequently, like every two weeks, and maybe more frequently in times of the year when there's changes. In when the grass the, is coming in and yep, like that, yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk more about grass in a second. Oh, so. <laughs> um, so what you need to weigh your mini is, is just a soft measuring tape, like a seamstress tape. Okay. I don't sew, but I think I got this like at a Joanne's Fabric or something. Um, because weight tapes like the traditional commercial ones that have you just put them around the girth they have the numbers on there they don't work for minis because of the proportions they're not right so you have to do the um heart girth measurement and the length mm. but you can't even use the equine weight calculator that we have on our website because it's not proportioned right either okay minis have their own formula that has been validated and it's, it's very long and complicated, so I'm not gonna say it. I'm just gonna have our videographer put it up on screen and then people can pause it and write it down. <laughs> but you know what Love I was it. thinking? It'll be good homeschooling. It'll be good math homework that, that you, 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 you and your kids can do together and yeah. I feel like we should have people send in like their equations after. <laughs> That's a great idea. That's a great idea. I will tell you that the um, average many weight is 250 pounds, because we're gonna use that in a second. Um, okay. We're gonna talk about diet, right? So the same um, uh, guidelines or rule of thumb works. You wanna feed one and a half to 2% of the body weight per day in total food, which for these guys is gonna be forage because they don't really need grain. 
Like they're so efficient. Oh, yeah. They don't they're need so power. thrifty. Yeah. Yeah. So if you weigh 250 pounds and you're getting 2% of your body weight per day, that's only five pounds. Oh my gosh, which is so different than how we feed horses. Mm -hmm. So you need, you really need to weigh your hay before you feed it. So the, the three things you should do with a mini hay, well, maybe four, um, you need to have it analyzed because it's gotta be low in SC or non-structural carbohydrates. And by that, I mean less than about 12 or 15%. Then, you, so you analyze it, you weigh it, then you soak it and get, get the last little bit of sugars out of it. And then uh, for this person who asked the question in the, the um, uh, community, you probably need to put it in some form of slow hay feeder, whether it's a, a bag, a net, or a, something you make it yourself. And they even make feeders that sit on the ground. You know, that you put the hay in and they, they have to be, uh, go through holes or slots to get the hay. And this is regardless if your mini has a condition or not. Like I know a lot of these recommendations you're giving right now, usually we tell people with horses who have like laminitis or easy keepers and things of that nature. You're saying this is regardless if you have a miniature horse, this is the best feed. Yeah, best for them. because they're little hoovers. They vacuum up <laughs> everything. And you, you've got to slow them down and increase their chew time and make the hay last. Um, there was one study in... Um, Oh, I forget where it was. It was in 2016. And they, they um, created a device. I don't know if it's commercially available. Maybe the gifted person could make it using a timer, but they, they had a, a, a sliding door on the forage source and it would allow them to eat for a while. And then it would close. Then they had a fence line and to get the food again on the other side of the device where that, that door opened, they had to walk around the fence. Oh, really? Make so exercise yeah, for it. Yeah. So you eat a little bit, you exercise a little bit, you eat a little bit, you exercise a little bit. So, but that was automatic. You know. Um, I like that. Yeah. I, there, there are, um, there are all sorts of creative ways that people have set up ways to to have horses exercise a little bit while they're eating. So, good looking at that. I was going to say, there are, I've seen that around a little bit where they put the hay at one end and then maybe the water's at the other end or mm -hmm. something like that. So it kind of forces the horse to kind of walk. And there's, there's um, uh, ways you can, you can fence off your uh, dry lots so that the horses have to move a little bit. That's great. That's a great tip right there. Yeah. Um, she did ask a question about the mineral oil. Is yeah. And, and so colic, um, yes, well, they're prone... To, like any horse, they, they can get colic. They're, they're not prone to, I would say, more colic, but, they, but there are a couple of specific kinds of colic that we see more often in um, minis. And that would be um, uh, fecal liths, enteroliths, and sand colic. And that sand colic is because mm. they're, you know, hoovering off the ground. Yeah. The, the, the fecal liths and the enteroliths, enteroliths, you're familiar with, they're the, the, the mineral concretions they can build up over time in the horse's gut. Mm -hmm. The fecal list, the, the word that, that the veterinarian might use, uh, we're gonna use today just to have a big long word on the screen is tri trichophytobezor. <laughs> yeah, and what it means is, uh, trico means hair, and phyto means plant, and bezor means um, just ball or mass. So in essence, this is a, this is a um, a hair plant mass. It's a horse hairball. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so the things you want to do to prevent that are groom. Mm -hmm. If you if you've ever groomed one of these, they have they have like horse so, amount of hair, but a little body. So much hair. You could build so another hair. mini off so of it. <laughs> got to get rid of that hair. Um, you got to feed a, a complete and balanced diet and do your best to. Um, you know, make things last as long as possible, whether it's moving in between flakes of hay or um, uh, putting them in a, a hay net or bag or some sort of feeder. Uh, you would think you would not want to do a lot of dental work because you don't want them to be any more efficient, mm -hmm. but they have the same amount and size of teeth as a full-size horse in a smaller area. So they tend to have dental problems. And if they can't chew right, 
they're sending large particles back and your chances of an impaction or a fecal lithograde or so greatly increased. Got to start early on the dental work and be just keep that up. Be on top of that. Man, um, they're cute, but man, they are high maintenance, it sounds like. <laughs> and I haven't even I haven't even gone into to all this stuff. Um she asked about uh ulcers and founder mm -hmm. and laminitis also. So Correct. we've not we don't we don't see an increased prevalence in also so that we can take off our list yay um, but because of their their propensity for obesity they are at higher risk for laminitis mm -hmm. um, there was the AAEP foundation so their charitable arm just finished a four-year study on laminitis they looked at about 200 horses with with laminitis to try to you know, get some some hard data around this terrible life threatening yeah. disease. Yeah, and they found that um, uh, obesity is the biggest risk factor for laminitis. So that is like number one. This is number one. Yeah, okay. and and also top of the list was um, recent diet or stabling changes, um, exposure to lush pastures, and then having um, endocrine or metabolic conditions like Cushing's or equine metabolic syndrome. So. Um, one person, Dr. Nick Frank from Tufts University, who is an expert in this area, he suggests that um, owners of minis have their vet out at least once a year, maybe more often, to do a complete physical exam and maybe mm -hmm. even do um, screening tests for equine metabolic syndrome and Cushing's disease. So in, in equine metabolic syndrome, it would be the, the oral sugar test to check for their insulin resistance. Because once so you have that... I was gonna say like proactively. Uh, yes. Because yes. you already know your horse potential or your mini might already be. Uh, yeah. Because maybe right now you let your mini go out with the other horses uh, on pasture. But if you begin to see that your horse is developing a, a metabolic or endocrine disease, pasture might not be in that mini's future. And so um, we sell a mini muzzle. I was just gonna ask, yep. And, and that's an option but they might need to be dry lotted or paddocked. It just might not be an option. So of course you wouldn't leave them in alone. You'd have somebody with them. Mm -hmm. um, but but if, if, it, if, if I could let my mini have grass just a little bit, don't, people feel terrible when they put a muzzle on their horse. My, my horse is muzzled and he, he puts it on himself. I hold it out and he puts his head in and he's like, let's go. Cause he knows I don't go out to pasture without my helmet on. Is this Newman? Uh, yeah. yeah. So he knows. Um, so we talked about, uh, you know, how to make the food last. And obesity, we talked about um, laminitis and we talked about the colic, oh, the mineral oil. Um, yep. I, I know some vets that, that, do, that do that, but I've not seen any, um, any paper or study, any research that says it, there's a benefit to it. So um, I, I don't particularly advocate for it. I know even when there's a, a colic going on that vets have gotten away from putting the stomach tube down and giving mineral oil. We tend to give water, electrolytes, and other things. We, we don't even give mineral oil for that anymore. I was going to say, I've been hearing that the last couple of years that vets have been moving away from doing the mineral oils during a colic. Yeah, so I, I, you know, talk to your vet. Don't let it give you a false sense of security that, oh, I give my mini a cup of mineral oil, whatever, and his feed and he's fine. I'm not so sure that that's having a benefit. It sounds like there's these other steps that you could be doing as far as like how to feed, how much to feed that are going to set you up for more success potential. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, hopefully that, that was a lot of information to digest there. Oh, uh, no pun intended. I didn't even try, it just worked out that way. But, <laughs> but hopefully this helps you and your mini out. And of course, if you have any other questions, please feel free to reach out.